KTNE. KUAM News Headlines is presented by Calvo's Insurance, a legacy of trust, serving Micronesia since 1938. Matson celebrating 25 years of commitment to Guam, Micronesia, and the CNMI. Cars Plus, home of Guam's first and only lifetime powertrain warranty. Visit carsplusguam.com for details. McDonald's of Guam, I'm loving it, and King's Restaurant, serving your local breakfast, lunch, and dinner favorites for over 45 years. Ahead on Primetime, Department of Administration and the Guam Police Department meet with lawmakers regarding their upcoming fiscal year budgets. Plus, the Paycheck Protection Program officially ends, and a residence in Estumbo covered in clutter raises concern with the community. Good evening, everyone. The Department of Administration says it has an urgent need for a new financial management information system, but despite a proposed emergency procurement, the process has remained stalled for many weeks now. DOA Director Edward Byrne made his case once again for a new financial management system during his agency's budget hearing. He said many of the big problems that arise can be traced to an antiquated legacy system. Technology has changed the way we all interact over the last 20 years. There are so many aspects of our lives which we conduct differently because of new technology. GovGuam is no different. Increased transactions and rapid reporting drive our needs, and that is why the change is considered an emergency. Byrne says he continues to press the Attorney General's office to complete its review and met with them as recently as last week. I understand, well understand, that the purpose of having the Attorney General's review is to prevent or at least reduce the likelihood of a, of a protest. And, and indeed, generally, that, that's happened. But if the result is that there's a whole lot of, of delayed procurement, I don't know that we've achieved too much. Byrne has been hesitant to discuss an estimated cost for a new system, but when pressed, said it would be around 8 to $10 million. Another hot-button issue discussed at the budget hearing was a new wage study on nurses' salaries. DOA Personnel Services Administrator Shane Ngata says the needs are overwhelming. Um, nurses in particular, uh, due to where they're um, employed, have a lot of intricacies for each department that we have to take into consideration. Uh, we did have a meeting with nurse leadership and they did convey to us some of the major issues um, concerning compensation. Um, some of them are uh, issues that they deal with compression, which we've seen before. DOA expects to submit a draft of the nurse wage study to the governor as early as this week. Meanwhile, GPD also underwent a budget hearing today. One of the standard questions being posed to department heads is whether they've requested American Rescue Plan money to augment their budgets. But a standard response is also emerging, such as in this exchange between Minority Leader Chris Duenas and Police Chief Steve Ignacio. Uh, yes, I did. Can you let us know uh, what, uh, what that amount was? I don't have it uh, offhand with me, sir, but uh, we did turn it into uh, Mr. Carlson and BBMR and also to, you know, uh, other staff at uh, okay. Loop. But I think everything is still under review, so I, I don't have the numbers with me, sir. So you don't have the dollar figure with you? No, I don't. Yeah. Okay. Did you, uh, are, is it for capital improvements or personnel or? Well, we, we were all over the place. I mean, you know, because we don't have guidance yet as to what, what, uh, is allowed or not allowed. Uh, we've asked everything from personnel, equipment, cars, uh, buildings, you know, construction. So, okay. you know, we're all over the place with it uh, because we didn't know what the guidance was. So, you know, we, we just submitted a, a wish list. But, you know, uh, it's my understanding from uh, uh, the governor's office and policy that, you know, uh, there's no firm commitment yet. There's no final rules. So there's still... Uh, Everything's still under review. Okay, it looks like th that's the standard answer. So I, 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 I got you, Chief. <laughs> I, I, I've been there. <laughs> Senators have said they want to know how much in ARP money the departments will be getting so that they can adjust their budgets accordingly. It appears that so far agency heads are keeping that information ambiguous. Add Speaker Therese Terlahi to the list of leaders who believe there's no reason why the governor shouldn't pay out the new All Rise Act right away. 
Speaking today on KOAM's The Link Show, she said the interim guidelines clearly read that American Rescue Plan funds can be used for direct payments to taxpayers. I think of all the things that we've put on our list, this one's clear, right? This qualifies. This one is, um, this one can be paid even under the interim guidelines. And I can't imagine that the, the final guidelines are going to take that away. Waiting until the middle of July, that's, no, that's egregious when the money is sitting there, right? The, go the governor has said she's waiting on the final guidelines to be released around mid-July before she pays out any of the all-rise money. She also said she will follow the $30 million cap established in the original RISE Act, despite expanding the eligibility for her all-rise program. And the Federal Paycheck Protection Program that provided nearly $800 billion in pandemic economic relief to 8.5 million businesses has officially closed. In a statement, SBA Administrator Isabella Casillas Guzman said, quote, I've heard story after story from small business owners across the country about how PPP, PPP funds helped them keep the lights on, pay their employees, and gave them hope. The SBA says 96% of PPP loans went to small businesses with fewer than 20 employees. The most recent statistics through the end of May show some 1,445 Guam businesses received loans totaling more than $106 million. The Guam Department of Education is still finalizing the budget for the $237 million in American Rescue, Rescue Plan funds it received. Superintendent John Fernandez. There's some questions that we still have and I've put to USDOE to clarify before we finalize them. Fernanda says that at this time, the department will focus at least $150 million on capital improvements and facility safety. The goal is to help the schools address the outstanding needs they've had for and years. Try to sustain these uh, safe environments over the next three to five years by putting in the investment now. Fernanda says much of the remaining portion will be focused on learning recovery as required by Congress. He expects the budget will be finalized next week. And 5,400 students along with GDOE are putting on their thinking caps and masks as they prepare for summer school. Superintendent Fernandez attributes the large number of registered students to the community's growing confidence in the overall public health situation, as well as the school's ability to take care of students while they're on campus. We're looking forward to the to the summer being an opportunity to just make sure we double test everything that we're doing. The big population, he says, will help with the transition into the regular school year and a chance to pers uh, ensure and improve their safety protocols in light of more students. A residence in Astumbo has become a community trash concern. Neighbors have made multiple complaints and the Dededo Mayor's Office along with Guam EPA echo the concern. KUAM's Adriana Cotero reports. It's been a lingering problem for years now. We get frustrated because, you know, we've helped you clean it. Let's help you again. Dedito Mayor Melissa Savarez joins her village in frustrations over an Estimbo residence in the Dollar Home area. That has become a major eyesore. You can tell that there's uh, other things than just the trash. You know, there's, uh, there's rodents. But as far as the vehicles that were there, we removed maybe about 15, maybe not more than 15 vehicles from just that one house because they have two sides. In the past five years, Savara says her office has paid several visits to the family residing in this home, providing as much assistance as possible to clean up all the clutter. What we do and, and how we help is we actually, after the trash is bagged or while they're bagging it, we actually bring a trailer because they, a lot of their excuses is they don't have a truck to haul these things to uh, to the solid waste facility. Even when the neighbors even offer, um, hey, let's get together and do this, you know, they're saying, well, what, are you, what is it to you? You know, and they have an attitude where, you know, you guys are picking on us, and they said, no, we're not. We just want to help you beautify our neighborhood. Savaris says they even pay for the disposal of the trash, but the piles just continue to grow, as do the complaints from neighbors. KUAM reached out to the homeowner, Rosa Tidegui, who is 81 years old and is receiving assistance from family members to maintain the property. They did offer, but they never brought the trailer there, not once. And many times my mom was uh, calling in, asking for assistance. 
straight up a start because the church don't even be locked on. When my mom has to be here twice, I think during the pandemic to help we get rid of the church. They said yes, but they never showed up. Although Savaras says otherwise. And you know, during COVID, especially you know when the, the kids families were walking to a Stumbo Elementary <laughs> to get their meals on you know on a daily or daily or on Fridays. You know, the kids have to walk through that area to get from their homes to the schools. Uh, I actually went there and I said, you know what, this is a problem. You know, if you bag it again, we'll help take it out. According to Savarez, Guam EPA has issued citations here in the past as the residents allegedly began illegally dumping into the vacant lot behind their fence. There was uh, a time, like several times, when we were with other government agencies in the area, and EPA was there at the time. And we literally saw them take trash from their house and take it to that vacant lot and, and put it over there. And, you know, EPA, we looked at EPA, the EPA guy that was there, and said, did you see that? And he walked over to them and gave them a citation. EPA spokesperson Nick Lee confirms that the agency has responded to this home on numerous occasions. Sabra says she has expressed to the family that they need to do their part. We want to clean up that, that, that area, especially it's right near the elementary school, the middle school down the street, and our Estopo gym is right there. Afaji shares this sentiment and says they are working to clean up the mess. I have, and we are trying to take out all that trash, and we're still working on it. We have not given up. Okay. It's not easy, but we're doing it one day at a time. Uh, with lots of bigger help, it's getting harder. A Port Authority employee has tested positive for COVID-19. Port General Manager Rory Respicio was notified this morning. He says an additional 44 port employees have been identified as pot potential exposures. The single positive case remains in active isolation and is experiencing mild symptoms. Respicio said the port contact tracing team worked immediately to identify all the contacts and notified public health to schedule testing for the exposed employees. We'll be back with more news right after this. Half a day. As we look ahead to a brighter tomorrow, Matson's commitment to Guam and Micronesia remains stronger than ever. While the world around us is ever changing, what remains unchanged is our commitment to you, our customers, and the island communities we serve. Shipping is what we do best and serving our community is at the heart of everything we do. But we don't do it alone. This is why we support organizations that make caring for the people and the environment a top priority. We know that many count on Matson's lifeline services in the Pacific. And that's why we continue to work hard to ensure that our shipments remain on time all the time. Matson recently added another Aloha class vessel to our schedule. We now have two of Matson's largest and fastest ships serving Guam from the US West Coast and Hawaii. With our new state-of-the-art vessels, we stand ready to support the region's economic recovery. Thank you for the privilege of serving you for the last 25 years. And you can count on Madsen to be here for the next 25 years and beyond. Social distancing may be the new norm, but connection will always be our tradition. Through good times and tough times, we remain connected with you. Mass may be the new fashion, but protection will always be our style. You can always count on us to protect the things that matter the most. Sanitizing may be the new routine, but caring will always be our practice. We care about your loved ones and the things you value the most. And as we welcome our new normal, one thing remains certain. We will always be here for you. We're open and ready to serve you. Calvo's Insurance, a legacy of trust. We're one of eight U.S. Regional Fishery Councils established under the Magnuson-Stevens Act. The Council uses the best available science and local knowledge to develop fishery management plans for over 1.7 million square miles of our productive Pacific waters. We worked with local scientists and managers to develop an app that captures detailed fishery data. Accurate catch data from the fishing community are needed to sustain fish populations. Take a proactive role in fishery management. The power of data is in our hands.
It's a special delivery to your inbox every week with your KUAM News Roundup, program advisories, and promotions. Sign up for the weekly KUAM Digital Digest today on KUAM.com. Welcome back. It doesn't make sense and it will cost too many dollars. The bipartisan resistance to a public law that privatizes tax collection continues as Senator Sabina Perez and Tello Tidegui lodged their opposition this morning on the link. The AG's office said in court filings that GovGuam simply can't afford to pay a private vendor the potential $17 million price tag. Senator Perez says paying a company that much takes millions away from the Healthy Futures Fund, which is used to help cancer patients and cancer-related issues. The documents show that the, this private contractor would get paid $17 million over the course of the possibility of an extension. And so DRT would, would have been able to do it at a, a cost of like, say, 1%, 2% of that amount. And so all that, all those millions of dollars uh, savings would have gone to um, paying, um, help, helping our most vulnerable populations. Um, and it's unfortunate that um, um, the body chose not to look at, look at that. Her bill would have scrapped the privatization law and returned collection and enforcement to DRT. But that measure failed seven to eight. Meanwhile, Senator Tidegui says the public should keep an eye on who wins the bid for privatized tax collection. She says if you look at who supported the current law, one can reasonably assume it was designed to favor a certain me. company. <laughs> I'm mad. I'm really mad. I sent out a press release to, uh, regarding this. And... Uh, it's, it's just unfair. So it, it's not over. I mean, you know, don't think we're just going to sit by and let this, you know, people get away with this. Revan Tax published an RFP for the privatization this morning. The Guam Power Authority has completed its investigation into allegations that several employees may have been participating in online gambling while on the job. Sabrina salas Matanani reports. GPA General Manager John Beneventi laying the cards on the table. Uh, our internal auditor went through the process. It was in March when allegations